Wow. So pomegranates are pretty tart. I don't think that's the fruit we were getting, but I'm sure it has an effect on the fruit taste. It just... Like, it can't not. Welcome to the channel, bringing a real world perspective to the real world whiskey consumer. I'm Josh. And I'm Aaron. And we are back with another Wild Card Wednesday video. This is where we draw a sample at random. This one today from our international pool of sipping spirits. We taste it, we give it a rating, we find out how much it costs and see if that changes our rating before we ever figure out what we're drinking. That way you get the most honest opinions possible. Yep. It's the way we like to do reviews, we like to drink whiskey. Let's get right into this on the nose. Let's do it. Oh, she a fruity one. Mm -hmm. She's a fruit loop. <laughs> <laughs> and when you said that. Like lemon. She's a lemon fruit loop. It put the visual representation of a bowl of fruit loops in my mind. Uh -huh. But the problem is, is that there is some scotchy smokiness here. Yeah. Not like a peat smoke or anything like no. that. Not peated. But just like this nice smokiness mm -hmm. to go along with the fruit. Which I'm excited to try this because I really like scotchiness. Yeah. And it's got this maltiness too. You said lemon earlier. It's I'm kind not... of like giving me like lemon Fruit Loop vibes. Yeah, I think there is a lemoniness there, but I think it's anchored with so much malt uh -huh. and smoke. Yeah. Like malt predominantly and a little bit of smoke that it's pulling the lemon so dark that I don't immediately pick up. Because it's not bright like it's a lemon. It's not a bright is. lemon. It's yeah. like a sweet lemon. Yeah. Let's get into it on the palate. Can't wait. Mm. Scotchy. Is, mm -hmm. Very good. It's very, very good. Very scotchy. Like a classic flavor <laughs> profile for scotch. But there's something on the back end that I can't put my finger on that's yeah. a little different. I don't know what there, it is. It's a fruitiness on the back end. Maybe. It hit me with the malty smokiness like a scotch would right on the front of the palate. And then on the finish, it transitions into this kind of raisiny note is what I'm getting, like a raisin or a date. Maybe, I. yes, you're on the right path. I don't know if I think it's a raisin or not, but it's something. I think it's a fig. Cause if you oh. think of like a fig Newton mm -hmm. or a fig bar, I'm getting very similar vibes to this as to yeah. that. We should try, I've had real figs before. We should try some again. Like it's been years. Man. Not like processed fig Newton bars. This is really interesting. I'm so it. used to getting the fruitiness and the sweetness up, up front, front and then having it transition into the oak and smoke on but the back flip. end. It's flip flop. I kind of like wild. it though. It feels high ABV um, to Not me. Not too high though. It feels pretty decently high. Over 50%, over 100 proof? Yes, I would say over 100 proof. You think so? I think so. Okay, yeah, I will say that it is for an international whiskey. It is dark. Mm -hmm. um, it's not crazy dark by like aged bourbon standards. But that doesn't or anything. mean anything in the international. The color, right? It doesn't. I mean, it could have color added. It probably doesn't. Most things that are in our pool don't mm -hmm. because we just aren't interested in things that have color added. Yeah. But this right here is coming across really nice. Let's take a sip. I'm getting kind of a pepperiness on the. This is now my third sip. I've taken on another sip. <laughs> Snuck one in there. Snuck one in there. Um, there's a little bit of a, pep a <laughs> pepperiness. Um, mid palate. Mid palate. Yeah. But ever so subtle. It's not. It's not overpowering or anything. It's just kind of nice. Yeah, I think that next sip for me right there just highlighted what I get when I get malt, which is like this kind of creamy honey maltiness. Okay. And that is the predominant thing I'm getting on the front of the palate right now. Okay. A little peppery, pepperiness mid palate, and then I'm still getting that little bit of like figgy fruitiness on the back end. That's tamed down a little bit for it, me on my face. It has, side. yeah. That's what I was gonna say next, is that it's just become so much more cohesive. Mm -hmm. Like your, your overall impression of this glass to me is like malt, honey, little pepper, little smoke, little fruit, and then it, it just kind of all mingles together yeah. really nicely. I'll tell you what this reminds me of, and I, I'm not trying to guess, but this reminds me a lot of a Highland Park 12-year Vikings honor. That's kind of what this reminds me of, but it's drinking with a little bit more ABV than that, I think. Mm. But if you like that, then this might be worth checking out. That's what it reminds me the okay. most of. All right. You got a rating on this thing? I do. All right. Where you at? I am a thumbs up. I like it. Okay. I am going to give it... I think a just okay. Okay. I can be swayed into a thumbs up if the price is right. Okay. But for me, the honey maltiness, the honey is so strong, and that's mm. not my favorite flavor. 
I think it is a well-crafted whiskey. It's just not quite my favorite flavor profile. Okay. So I'm kind of vacillating between thumbs up I'm and not, just okay. I'm not getting honey. Really, that's the most thing I get. So in our pool, this is number 32. And the price on this, mm. and that's all what it comes down to, is... Now, now that you said honey, I can get it, though. It's $90. Oh. International whiskey... Is your score staying thumbs up? Um, I will probably change it to just okay because I've had others that I probably would pick over this um, for that at that price range. And you don't have to have a bottle. I don't of have this. to have a bottle of this. Yeah, you I like mind it. One. I don't dislike it, so I, I started at thumbs up because I liked it. Yeah. But the price is going to give it to just okay because I don't have to have it. Um, at this price point. Yeah. At $90, I'm going to stay at just okay as well. It is good. Don't hear what we're not saying. It we're is not good. saying it's bad. Mm -hmm. If somebody poured this for me at their house, I oh, would man. happily enjoy the glass. I just don't have to have a bottle of it, which thumbs up for us means we want to buy a bottle of it. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be a just okay for both of us. Let's find out what we've been drinking. What this is, is, oh, wow. This is an Israeli single malt. Oh. Thanks to Eric David Gunderson. This is Milk and Honey Apex. Finished in pomegranate wine casks. Pomegranate. I don't I even wonder... know what a pomegranate tastes like. Oh, I don't drink not... the palm juice or you've whatever. You've had pomegranates before? Is that the fruit that we're getting it's here? It's the, the ones with the seeds. Right. Is that the fruit we're getting on this, though? It might be. Pomegranates are pretty, actually, like, bitter. Like, tart. They're tart. And we're not getting tartness here. You know you said you thought this had some ABV to it? What? How... Take a guess. I don't know. I just think it's, like... In whiskey terms, I would guess like one teens. 60.3% ABV. So what's so that mean? 120.6 proof. Boom. This is thanks to Eric David Gunderson. Milk and Honey Apex. Wow, this is the first Israeli whiskey that mm -hmm. I think we've ever tried. So fascinating. Definitely scotch. Try. Reminiscent of scotch. Very yeah. much. Very much. Absolutely. Like I said, it to me, tastes kind of like Highland Park Vikings Honor 12-year, mm -hmm. except just amped up. So if you like that and you want... I amped up version of that. I mean, for $90 for 60% ABV I, for an Israeli whiskey. I could tell it was high proof. Man, I kind of want to change it to thumbs up. Like, it didn't come across 120 proof to me. So, be, if it was just like a, a scotch, you'd just be like, eh, that's that's not worth $90. But because it's an Israeli whiskey, it's worth I mean, $90? I'm gonna stay. Like, I'm going to stay just okay, no, but I do I, like it a lot. I'm not shaming you. I'm asking. Yeah. Like, I want to know. I'm curious. I think it's cool. I think it's cool yeah. that it's an Israeli whiskey. Yeah. It's it's a fantastic pour. It's a really good glass of whiskey. Mm -hmm. I don't have to have a bottle of it, personally speaking. Yeah. It's probably not going to be the thing if we did have a bottle that I would reach for all the time. That's yeah. my just okay rating. Yeah. But I do enjoy it quite a bit. Can't thank Eric enough for yeah. sharing the sample with yeah, us. thank you, Eric. Very surprised at this. If you've had Milk and Honey Apex or Milk and Honey anything, any Israeli whiskey, let us know in the comments below. We read everything that you guys put down there. Hopefully, somebody has tried this and you can let us know what you think, yeah. what flavors you might be getting. I'm kind of curious now. This is such an oddball pour, and yeah. Eric is the king of international whiskeys he is. in our world so and just in our hearts in, in our general hearts. so <laughs> hopefully you guys enjoyed this one today that's going to be it be good to each other and until next time cheers. cheers eric has expanded our palates like so much i know it's eric is doing uh, eric is a whiskey steward he's just spreading the gospel of all the <laughs> of different all whiskeys. the whiskeys yeah all of worldwide whiskey he's yeah. a worldwide whiskey yeah tribe grower uh, I, think, I don't think we can say Whiskey Tribe on here. I think that's trademarked by Whiskey Tribe. <laughs> we can say it. We're All not... Right. Yeah, whatever. We're going to cease and desist.